A couple of months ago, I made a video comparing one of the world's most expensive perfumes to its much more affordable dupe. I put both perfumes through a very comprehensive real-world test and what I discovered was mind-blowing. The difference between the two fragrances was almost non-existent aside from the drastic price difference. That's why I wanted to recreate the experiment again with another luxury perfume to see if I would get a different result. I've mentioned in my previous video that a few years ago I traveled to Grass, France where you will find the world's oldest perfumeries and learned all about the process of making the finest fragrances money can buy. While I was there, I had the opportunity to create my own perfume and let me tell you, it was a lot harder than you would imagine. My perfume smelled like a marriage between an irritating explosion of Febreze and a heavily scented laundry detergent. So what I learned from this experience is one, I will never be a renowned perfumer and two, there is truly an art and science behind combining certain essences together to create a well-balanced and memorable fragrance that you can't get enough of. Today, I'm going to compare one of the most beloved fragrances in the world, which retails for $170 to its $17 dupe, and find out if you really do have to spend a fortune on a luxury perfume to experience an incredible, high-quality fragrance. This is a $170 bottle of perfume. This is its $17 dupe. Today I'm going to be comparing these two fragrances side by side. This is Eau de Soleil Blanc by Tom Ford and this is its dupe version by Oil Perfumery. I accidentally discovered Oil Perfumery a few years ago when I was searching for a retailer that carried my favorite perfume of all time, Baccarat Rouge 540, which wasn't available in Canada at the time. I found OP through a Google search and saw that they made a fragrance inspired by BR 540, so I bought it, of course, and the rest is history. I've been addicted ever since, and the dupe I used in my previous video was by a brand called Okja, a sister brand of Oil Perfumery. The reason why I'm comparing the Eau de Soleil Blanc with the oil perfumery is because if you're comparing the concentration of essences, they are more or less the same in that sense. The main difference between these two fragrances is that the base for the Tom Ford is alcohol and the base for oil perfumery is oil. Regular perfumes, whether they are an extractive perfume or eau de toilette, use alcohol as the base. Alcohol tends to vaporize really quickly and is also more quickly absorbed by the skin. Perfume oils use oil as the base and do not absorb as quickly into the skin. They make great carriers for essences and also a great base to layer alcohol-based fragrances on top of to enhance the perfume and give it more depth. Everything else about them seems to be more or less the same. I will get into more detail about that later in the video, but just like with my previous comparison video where I compared one of my favorite fragrances of all time with its luxury dupe, I'm going to go into a deep dive of comparing these two fragrances in detail, starting with the price. So as I mentioned, the Tom Ford Eau de Soleil Blanc retails for $170 Canadian for 50 ml. The oil perfume version, this is a roller ball, you're getting 10 ml and it retails for $16.95 Canadian. So first things first, I know that the volume is different, but Oil Perfumery also sells this perfume in a 60 ml size for $74.95. So you're still paying a lot less for the Oil Perfumery version versus the Tom Ford version. Let's talk about packaging. The Tom Ford Eau de Soleil Blanc comes in this frosted glass bottle, which is beautiful. The lid is not magnetized like my Baccarat Rouge 540 bottle that I compared in my previous video. It's made from plastic, but it does have this beautiful gold metal plate that's embossed with Tom Ford, which I really, really love. I think it adds a really beautiful luxe factor to it. However, this gold label here is just a sticker that they put on the glass bottle. And my bottle is fresh out of the box. I haven't even sprayed it. I'm gonna be spraying it with you guys on camera for the first time, but for whatever reason, it looks like it has a little bit of wear on it already. So that is not very impressive considering how much this perfume costs. The Oil Perfumery Rollerball just comes in a simple glass bottle like this and it has a black lid that you just screw off like that. It has a metal roller ball that makes it really easy to glide onto your skin. It's very small and compact so it's great 
to travel with, to throw in your purse and just apply on the go. Is it as luxurious as the Tom Ford? Absolutely not, but it is very small and discreet and it's a lot more affordable. Here are the notes for Tom Ford's Eau de Soleil Blanc. The top notes are pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, and pink pepper. The heart notes are tuberose, ylang ylang, Egyptian jasmine, and the base notes are coconut milk, amber, tonka bean, and benzoin. Here are the notes for OP's version of Soleil Blanc. So the top notes are also pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, and pink pepper. The heart notes are tuberose, ylang ylang, and jasmine. And the base notes are coconut, amber, tonka bean and benzoin. So the only two notes that might create a differentiation between the two fragrances are jasmine and coconut. Okay, so just like with my previous comparison video where I was comparing two fragrances to each other, I did a paper test. So what the paper test is, basically I'm going to apply each perfume to a piece of paper and I'm going to do a sniff test to see if I can notice any differences in each perfume. So I'm gonna label each one so I know what I'm smelling. So this one is OP, so oil perfumery, and this one is TF for Tom Ford. So I'm gonna first apply the oil perfumery. And then I'm gonna apply Tom Ford to this one. I'm just gonna let that settle for a minute or so. Just like with my other video, I prepared a little bowl of beans. So what the coffee beans do is basically clear your palate. So when you are smelling each fragrances, erase the scent before that so that you're smelling the next fragrance kind of with a clear canvas. So I'm gonna begin by smelling the coffee beans just so I can get rid of any smell that I have in my nose right now. And then I'm gonna smell the oil perfumery version first. Okay, then I'm gonna smell Tom Ford. I'm just gonna do that one more time. And then Tom Ford again. So right off the bat, I actually like the oil perfumery version better. I don't know what it is about the Tom Ford. It smells kind of soapy to me. It smells very soapy and florally to me. I can really smell that jasmine in the Tom Ford. Yeah, I'm picking up a lot of jasmine right now. The oil perfumery smells a lot more citrusy. I'm picking up like a orange mandarin note and some ylang ylang. It also smells more fresh. Okay, so that was interesting because I thought that I would like the Tom Ford version better. But right now I like the softness of the OP version. All right, so the paper test kind of gives you like an initial idea of what the fragrances are like. Once you put them on your skin and you let them melt with your body's oils and pheromones, it kind of develops and changes and smells and wears totally different. So that's why the skin test is so, so important. So I'm gonna go ahead and first spray Tom Ford. I'm gonna be spraying Tom Ford to my left wrist. And then I'm going to apply the OP dupe to my right wrist. I'm just gonna let that settle into my skin. So within the first five to 15 minutes of applying a fragrance to your skin, the notes that you are smelling are the top notes. Between two and four hours of applying a fragrance to your skin, you're gonna be smelling more of the heart notes. And then after that point, like four to six hours after applying a fragrance to your skin, those are mainly the base notes that you're going to be smelling. So that's what I mean by a fragrance developing as you wear it throughout the day. It really changes and transforms, especially on different types of skin. A fragrance can smell one way on one person and totally different on another person. So that's why whenever you're shopping around for a fragrance, if you can try to sample it, apply it to your skin and wear it throughout the day. That way you'll have a much better idea of how that particular fragrance works with your skin and your body's oils. All right, so it's been about five minutes since I applied the fragrances. I'm first going to smell the Tom Ford.
That's really interesting. After applying it to my skin, I feel like OP smells a little bit different. It smells a lot more like Tom Ford now. The Tom Ford still smells soapy to me, and that's not typically a scent that I gravitate towards. I remember the first time I sprayed this Tom Ford perfume on my skin in a department store. Right off the bat, I wasn't a fan of it because I just don't like those super florally, soapy powder scents but as I wore it throughout the day, I liked it more and more and more. As it wears down, I feel like it has more of a freshness to it. It's more light and airy, but right off the bat, I'm not such a super fan. And that's exactly the feeling that I have now. The OP version is definitely a lot more delicate. So I'm still picking up a lot of that jasmine from the Tom Ford version and from the oil perfumery it feels a lot more light and airy in my opinion and I can smell more of those citrus notes. Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about is originality. How original is this fragrance? In my opinion, I would say this fragrance is like a 6 out of 10 in terms of originality. I have smelled a lot of fragrances that are very similar to Soleil Blanc. If Baccarat Rouge 540 is like a 10 out of 10 in terms of originality, then Tom Ford is kind of like in the middle of the scale of that. When I think about originality, I think about if I were to smell this fragrance on someone, would I instantly be able to recognize it and know what it was? And the answer to that question is not necessarily. With Baccarat Rouge 540, I feel Feel like the moment I walk past someone who's wearing it, I know what it is. So that's kind of how I would rate it in terms of originality. In terms of power and radiance, and what I mean by that is if a fragrance is sharp or enveloping, I feel like this fragrance is pretty well balanced when it comes to that. In the beginning, it is more on the sharper side. You really get hit hard with those florals, in my opinion, especially with the original Tom Ford and then over time it is a lot more enveloping so it kind of transforms and it's more well-rounded it doesn't hit you so hard and it's a very pleasant kind of citrusy floral fresh scent that you want to smell over and over again in terms of versatility I definitely feel like this scent is more of a summery scent whenever I smell it it reminds me of the beach, of the sun, of the ocean. It's not a scent that I would likely gravitate towards all year round. For me, it's also more of a going out scent. It's a little bit too strong for me as a daytime scent, but to each his own. I know a lot of people who like to wear the scent during the day. I definitely feel like the OP version is a lot more wearable if you did want to wear it throughout the day. And what I like about this is that you can layer it. So if you want it more intense, you can just add more. If you want just a little hint of the scent, then you just apply a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go about my day and I'm gonna do two check-ins. The first check-in I'm gonna do will be about two to four hours after this point. Right now it is 12 o'clock on my watch, 12.06 to be exact. So I will come back between 2 and 4 p.m. and then my last check-in will be between four and six hours after this point. So I'm going to do my first check-in now. I just came home from a walk with my baby girl. I don't know what's going on with this weather in Toronto right now. Yesterday it was like a beautiful summer day and today we're back to winter. Anyways, I have my baby girl in her play yard right behind me. So if you see that I'm a little bit distracted, that is why. I wanted to go ahead and do my first check-in. It's been about three hours since I last sprayed the perfumes onto my wrist. So this should be a good time to test for longevity and see what heart notes really stand out to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and smell the Tom Ford first. Okay, I don't know if it's because I have the Eau de Toilette, but I barely smell anything. Okay, so I do smell a little bit of like a spiciness to it. That's probably the pink pepper. And I smell a little bit of ylang ylang and jasmine. It still smells more powdery to me. Let's smell the OP. 
Wow, the OP really, really developed beautifully in my opinion. It has a bit of a sweetness to it, a little bit of a floral citrusy. It smells a lot more delicate and pretty, if that makes any sense. And I can definitely smell it on my wrist a lot more than the Tom Ford. So in terms of longevity, I think OP is winning right now. So I'm going to come back and do the final check-in in a couple hours. That way I can give you my final breakdown. So we're just on our way to my in-laws house for dinner and I wanted to do my final check-in because it's been about six hours since I first applied the perfumes to my wrists. So I'm first going to smell OP. Yeah, Tom Ford. Okay, I'm gonna smell Tom Ford first and then OP. Okay, so honestly guys, I can barely even smell Tom Ford at this point. It's like completely worn off my body. I can still smell OP and it's faded really, really nicely. It has like a very soft kind of musky sweetness to it. A little bit of that pink pepper and the jasmine and ylang ylang. I feel like all of the notes kind of melted down really nicely. It's a very pleasant smell. So overall, I'm really, really impressed with the longevity of uh, OP in comparison to the Tom Ford. What happened? You don't want mama to film? Can you smile? Can you see a smile? What is it? What do you want? Cookies. So what I learned from this experiment comparing another luxury fragrance to a high quality dupe is that it's really not worth spending so much money on luxury perfumes because what you are really paying for is branding and marketing. And after doing some research, I also learned that OP sources all of their ingredients from the same places the luxury fragrance houses do. And they also use the same perfumeries in France to produce their fragrances. This is one of the main reasons I love what the team behind Oil Perfumery and Okcha are doing. They've really figured out how to open the doors to luxury fragrances to everyone. And in some cases, they've outdone the luxury perfume houses in my opinion. Some other reasons I love using Oil Perfumery over conventional alcohol-based fragrances is that they're super high quality, they're super long lasting on the skin and a little bit goes a long, long way. They're easy to layer, they're super portable and of course they're super affordable. I do also have a discount code with Oil Perfumery and Okja. It's the same discount code that you can use on both of their websites. It's just Sneaky Sky 15 and it will get you 15% off your order. This is not sponsored. It's just a code that they wanted to share with my audience and I wanted to share it with you guys. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and enjoyed my experiment comparing another super expensive luxury perfume with its luxury dupe. Let me know what you thought about this video and if you want to see another one like this, I'd be happy to do it for you. As always, thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next one.